guys, welcome to the Everett Silver Show. We have excited guests as we do every week. And so I want to thank you so much for tuning in. And I'm always bringing it to you. So thanks so much for staying in tune with us. Stay connected. You're watching the Everett Silver Show. How you doing? It's Ronnie. Thank you guys so much for doing the show today. Pleasure to have you. Thank you for Thank having us. us. Well, folks, uh, what if your true love is hiding the massive secret, and that secret is you? Uh, help, I'm in a secret relationship, and I tell you, MTV's exciting uh, new docuseries kind of uncovers the heartbreaking stories of people who have been emotionally manipulated into keeping their relationships a secret, and I have the host... Uh, recording artist Travis Mills and also actress Ronnie Jones is with us. And so, uh, Travis, I'll start with you. Talk about, uh, you know, this uh, exciting docuseries. I mean, I feel like the title says it all, right? It really just hits the nail on the head. Uh, these are people who have been in relationships oftentimes two, three, four, five years. They live together. Um, you know, they are, quote, unquote, in love and everything's great on paper. There's just one big red flag, and that's their secret. They haven't met their partner's friends. They haven't met family. They're not posted on social media, and they've pretty much exhausted all resources in terms of trying to get their questions answered, and that's where Ronnie and I come in. And so we travel all around the country and try to help these people find out why they're being hidden. Now, now uh, Ronnie, you you are uh, kind of like a home person. I'm from the D.C. area, so I know. So spring very well. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, my goodness. Absolutely. Yeah. And so, uh, I mean, you know, those are my stomping grounds there. But talk about uh, uh, you, you, you've you got some interesting things happening from, you know, when you think in terms of relationships, where do you think, uh, you know, we just got to be more honest, correct? Oh, absolutely. I think what, what, what the viewers will see in this show is that there is a love, obviously a level of dishonesty, a level of secrecy. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, our whole point is to get these couples to communicate because clearly there's been a lack of it, whether it's from one person trying to get answers to the other person, gaslighting them, um, trying to make make it seem like the relationship is just great and you know there's no need to meet my friends right now we're not there yet or my family and then fast forward three four five years like travis said and it's the same old same old um so our whole focus is is honesty and and communication because without it you have nothing you don't have a solid foundation and i think that's what the couple soon realize once we get to the bottom of it uh, uh, Ronnie, you being a uh, writer and actor, uh, you know, host and things of that nature, what do you think, uh, you know, do you think uh, Help I'm in a Secret Relationship is kind of, uh, you know, from a perspective of us viewing it, capturing what we need to see? I mean, I think so. I think well, the interesting thing is I'm curious to see if people know that this is a thing, right? I envision people watching the show and realizing, wait a minute. Am, am I in a secret relationship? Am I the victim of something like this? Which, in turn, hey, we're here to help. But I think that it'll definitely be a level of of, of clarity for a lot of people. And I do think the show does a good job of not only uh, portraying um, how this is a this affects someone's um, self esteem, uh, but not only. And not only that, but also how it affects the person that is doing the hiding and juggling all these different pieces and, and, and you know, the level of anxiety that they have. And so it's a fascinating study, I think, in empathy across the board. And Travis, I was going to say, yeah, when you think in terms of uncovering shock and clues, some of the theories as to why, I guess, the secret was being kept in the beginning, right? Uh, Throughout the journey of this of this show, you will find some shocking reasons and justifications on why right. people think it's okay to hide their partners. Um, there's a lot of twists wow. and turns. There are a lot of surprises. And, I mean, everything that you would think is going to take place on a show like this, just based off the title alone, you're probably right. It's uh, it, You're in for a wild ride. <laughs> well, folks, we're going to let everybody know Help I'm in a Secret Relationship premieres Tuesday, April 26th, uh, 9 p.m. on MTV. What a wonderful uh, time to talk with uh, recording artist Travis Mills, also actress Ronnie Jones, who's been with us. Guys, thanks for doing the show. Thank you Thank so you much so for much having us.
Uh, well, guys, uh, thanks so much for tuning into the Everett Silver Show. Stay tuned. Don't turn that dial because we got more exciting guests right here on the Everett Silver Show. Be back in a moment. Hi, Everett. Hi, Everett. Jan C., Dr. F uh, Cunningham, thank you so much for doing the show. A pleasure to have you both. Nice to be here. Well, folks, um, uh, the Smithsonian kind of channel original documentary chronicles come kind of how people of color suffer from systematically substandard health care in the United States and how COVID-19 has kind of exposed the tragic consequences and some of the uh, inequalities and stuff. So, so the color of care, uh, there's going to be a fair amount, and I have Oscar-nominated and Emmy-winning director Yancey Ford is here with us, and also featured participant of the film, Dr. Hetty Cunningham. And so I'll start with you, uh, Yancey. Talk about just uh, this film and what it speaks to. So, um, Everett, this film really centers uh, the personal stories of people who have lost loved ones to COVID-19. Um, the, the Fowler family, the Hargrove family, and the Rollins family um, from, from different parts of the country um, and what these three families have in common um, is the attempt to get treatment um, for COVID-19 and um, the inability to be treated either well or t in a timely manner or with adequate urgency um, and the, the consequences of, um, uh, you know, of those circumstances leading to the death of their loved ones. Um, you know, we also think it was important to, in the film to help people understand the history of health disparities in this country and the fact that they are actually are not a new thing, even though we just started talking about them sort of in earnest um, around COVID-19. Um, you know, racialized health disparities have been a part of medicine since the, since the um, modernization of medicine. And so one of the things that the, the film also seeks to do is to educate the audience um, about where these personal stories fit within our history as a nation. And then, Dr. Um, Cunningham, uh, I, I was, uh, you know, looking at that. I know some of the interests that may come out. We talked about addressing anti-racism, health care disparities. Talk about your involvement and, and, and what's close to your heart. So I was honored to be a part of this project because so many of my family and friends have experienced the same types of, um, of uh, experiences that are, are there highlighted by these three families. But in addition, I've been working for many, many years on educating health uh, care providers and medical students on health care disparities. Um, we, the, the Black Lives Matter movement and the um, COVID health care disparities have really ignited um, a movement towards change within medical institutions. And so we're really having the opportunity to do a lot of work on um, teaching our students and our faculty about systems of care and how um, it's not enough to just treat the person that's in front of you, but you really have to know the history of the country. You have to know something about the resources that are available and that gives you a perspective on the person um, sitting in front of you. So we're doing a lot of work um, helping the medical community to refocus on systems of care and on addressing these healthcare inequities. And then, yeah, and see, um, the, I noticed, too, that the color uh, uh, of care kind of uh, kind of really impacts the campaign, really, that kind of activates, uh, you know, as uh, Dr. Cunningham was talking about, some of the, you know, bring, I guess, some awareness to the nursing schools, healthcare workers, policymakers. Talk about the impact this film will have. Sure. Well, we hope that um, the film will have an impact uh, uh, across our culture broadly, specifically with policymakers who have, um, the ability to address, um, you know, the, the root causes of racialized health disparities um, on, le on the legislative level. Um, we hope that the film will, um, as part of its, you know, um, campaign to be in classrooms um, and partner with, with medical schools across the country, um, we hope the film will educate um, the next generation of doctors about health disparities so that we can actually end health disparities with this next generation of doctors. Um, and then we also hope that the film will, will reach doctors who are currently in practice and who might be, you know, 
is interested in figuring out whether or not they deliver equal care to all their patients, as I'm sure they believe, right? It's important to remember that the film is not necessarily about the malintent of any individual doctor. The film is about a system in which these doctors operate. And what we hope the film will do is to help everyone understand the way that the system works so that we can change the system to the benefit of all. And then, uh, Dr. Uh, Cunningham, lastly, uh, when you, uh, I think it also focuses the campaign on historically black colleges as well as HB, I mean, you know, different HBCUs, universities, but also empower communities. Uh, what, what do you think else that we need to do from, uh, I guess, medical standpoint, uh, because I know you were awarded the humanism type uh, medicine award. Talk about that. We need to, uh, there's so many things we need to do in education. We need to mm -hmm. teach, uh, I mean, at a base, like, um, we need to teach providers how to care for people with different colors of skin. We need to create right. technologies that right. care for people with dark skin. So even pulse oximeters, I was just reading about a, a PhD student at Brown, uh, a woman who is creating a pulse oximeter that will care, will, that will pick up oxygen levels equally on darkly melanated skin as light melanated skin. These are basic um, factors. In addition, we need everyone to know um, the, 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 that health disparities exist and why people are, may have distrust in the medical system, why people... Um, may not come to care um, and, and to change the way that they approach even the individual patient with a humanity, with an understanding of what they're going through um, and to really partner on a one-to-one -one level with our patients um, with respect and compassion. Well, I want to uh, invite everybody to know that The Color of Care premieres Sunday, May 1st, uh, 8 p.m. on the Smithsonian Channel. Again, what a privilege to have uh, Oscar-nominated and Emmy-winning director uh, and also producer of the film, uh, Yancey Ford, and also Dr. Hetty Cunningham, who is also a featured participant uh, in the film. Guys, thank you so much for doing the show. So much we got to learn. Thank you. Thank you. More guests coming your way. Don't touch that dial. I'll be back in a moment. Everett. Frankie, thank you for doing the show. I appreciate having you. Of course. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> well, folks, worlds collide in special Nickelodeon crossover. Then I have Frankie Grande here. He's, you know, all about playing the villain. Uh, your favorite Nick stars uh, have to come together to defeat him. So uh, talk about Frankie. This, uh, this is interesting, man. Uh, thank you so much. Yes, it is very fun getting to play a character like Frankini, who is a supervillain. He is a technological expert as well as a musical theater and dance enthusiast. So he, in this episode, tries to steal the orb of power to turn everyone in the world into his backup dancers. And everyone not only in his world, which is the Danger Force world, but also... The four other worlds that have been created on Nickelodeon, this is a massive crossover between the cast of Side Hustle, Warped, Danger Forest, That Girl Lele, Young Dylan, and uh, yeah, we're all coming together in this one epic episode. I'm very excited. Well, I got to tell you, man, it, it's going to be the, the it's powerful mind blowing. Uh, just you know, I, I guess just the adventure of it, trying to control the mindsets to get them to do what you want to do, right? How exciting is that? Oh, it's really fun, and again, like I think he's a, a pure-hearted villain, you know, and that he just <laughs> he just wants to have some backup dancers everywhere he goes for the rest of his life. I mean, what a lovely concept, you know, totally fine, uh, but it's well, a lot of fun, I tell you. Now, Frankie, you gotta, yeah, you know, I mean, you've come from dance and acting and producing. I mean, you've done Broadway, also produced some shows. How, how, how is this character uh, doing some of the stuff with Nickelodeon? Is, is just, uh, you know, exciting for you? Well, it's exciting for me because you never know what you're going to get. You know, every single time I, I get a script for Frankini, it is even more elaborate, even more over the top, just um, completely 
uh, she really like life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get with Frankini. So um, I, I, I get very <laughs> excited to know whether I'm going to be um, hanging upside down or flying across the room or, you know, like exploding a confetti cannon or singing or dancing or both. So um, it's a very versatile character. And I love how creative the writers have been with him throughout the years. Well, I got to tell you, coming from, you know, I remember your one man show, uh, Living La, La Vida Grande. But oh what, just God. talk about the. I, I remember that. So <laughs> I do remember that. I loved that show. That was so much fun. I'm bringing it back. Glad you said something. I'm doing it again. <laughs> Man, I got to tell you, because uh, the, the uh, ex I mean, you, you've got a lot of energy, a lot of things. That I, I mean, I just see your career just going from here. I want to make sure everybody know that uh, when Worlds Collide episodes, uh, Side Hustle airs Thursday, actually, uh, April 21st, I believe, 7 p.m. on Nickelodeon. And then, frankly, with that being said, any last minute things you want to say, man, because it's just a pleasure to have you on the show. Oh, I'm so grateful. Thank you for having me. You can follow me on all my socials at Frankie J. Grande. And I'm also the host of SpongeBob Binge Pants uh, for Nickelodeon and iHeartRadio. And you can stream that anywhere where you get your podcasts. So check it out. I love it. Yeah. Again, guys, uh, Frankie Grande, thank you so much for doing the show. Thank you for having me. Bye bye. Right. You're welcome. More guests coming your way. Don't touch that dial. I'll be back in a moment. Everett. Stacy Alley, what a pleasure to have you on the show today. Thanks for doing it. Of course. Well, I can tell you, uh, I, this has got to be exciting. You're talking about, you know, some of country music's biggest stars. Stays Cold California's Country Music Festival is coming uh, April 29th through the 1st. And I have the wonderful, you know, I have the Golden Voice, Stacy V, and also YouTube's Alley Rivera. Guys, thanks so much. And I guess I'll start with you, uh, Stacy. You're talking about this three day event. On the headline, Thomas Red, Carrie Underwood, Luke Combs. Talk about it. I mean, it's 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 been a work um, that we've poured so much love and energy and care into the past couple of years, and and we're so excited for folks to be able to experience it both in person and you know online for the first time ever. Um, we're taking Stagecoach to the Globe this year. So headliners, Thomas Rhett, Carrie Underwood, Luke Combs, Marin Morris. Um, it's quite literally the, the biggest country music festival on the planet. Um, and we're going to be celebrating in person and, you know, in, in all kinds of, you know, corners and, and living rooms all across the country and world. And Ali, I got to tell you, I've seen some of the clips. It, it really looks so fun. But how are you as a director, you're talking about the live music, Put all this talent together on one stage. Yeah, I mean, it's we we thank Stacy and her team. They they book the artists. Um, we work with the production team to make sure we can get as many artists as possible into the live stream. You know, it's three full days of music, and so we're we're really you know trying to bring the entire experience. It's stage coach is very special, and it's so much fun and unique. But you know, not not everyone can make it there. So um, getting to show people all around the world the magic of it is really really cool um we have there's so many artists on the youtube side that we work very closely with um, that we get to support as part of this music festival um breland has been an artist on the rise on the youtube for um you know years and we've been working really closely with him um he's hosting friday we have different live stream hosts every day so we're it, this is a unique festival in that um, artists that are performing are also kind of like hosting the live stream and like bringing people into the experience. So this is, um, we're, we're ecstatic about this one. Now, now Stacey, you, you've been, uh, you know, vice president of this talent type of golden voice. Uh, you know, you're responsible for booking all this type of talent, but I know other than just singing, there's a lot of things going to this festival. I, I sing from dancing to horseback riding. Talk about a little more of that experience that's going to take place. Yeah, that's that's some of that's 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 a lot of fun putting together all the, you know, stuff that happens on the stages. But then there's also like this whole other, you know, experience. We have we partner with Guy Fieri, um, who curates our Stagecoach Smokehouse, and he's on site all three days, um, you know, cooking up food and smoking, you know, meats and grilling and 
gives folks samples and he does uh, cooking demos each night. Um, he'll be doing one with uh, Midland, Low Cash and Luke Combs. Um, so folks can watch that in person. Uh, we also have our honky tonk dance hall where there's, you know, line dancing and they give line dancing lessons and celebrity DJs in there. Um, we're also partnering with the Compton Cowboys this year um, who will be out with their horses um, and doing riding demonstrations, signing autographs and just kind of showcasing. Um, we built a replica of their ranch um, out at Stagecoach. So they'll be able to give folks a little bit of a little taste of, of what they do out in Compton. Um, so it's, it's a whole experience. It's, um, there's, there's so much incredible music to see, but there's so many, um, you know, wonderful experiences to be had as well. And then lastly, awesome. Uh, um, Ali, you, 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 this, you know, phenomenon behind the campaigns like on YouTube and things, let the audience know. So I know you know, you're going to be able to live stream it exclusively on YouTube this event from, uh, again, Stage Coast Guys, California's Country Music Festival, April 29th through the 1st. What can we expect there in the um, Empire Polio Club in the, uh, California? Um, you can expect to like, feel like you're there. I think like one of the most incredible things if you've tuned into a Coachella or some of the live streams is just the quality of the stream, the cameras. This year we're doing um, live cinema cameras so it's, it's basically just a, a front row view. So for anyone that's not there, you pop it up on your TV, you watch it on your mobile device, but you're, you're really getting that, that like very comfortable experience to be able to watch um, the stream anywhere you want it to be. And I would say, even though it starts on Friday, there's things you can do this week. You can listen to um, you know, playlists and kind of get in the mood. You can set your reminders. So we're sort of like, gearing up like go time is now to really get everyone in the mood and again i want to let everybody know the three day festival will stream live on state coaches official youtube channel again april the 29th through may 1st what a wonderful privilege to talk to golden voices stacy v also youtube's ali rivera thank you guys so much for doing the show i'm excited for you thank you so much thank you i hope you'll tune in we definitely will tune in all right bye-bye more guests coming your way. Don't touch that dial. I'll be back in a moment. Well, folks, I tell you, uh, uh, black Americans kind of at higher risk for developing heart failure and earlier age, and you know, there uh, increased risk though of hospitalization from heart failure, you know, accompanied by white Americans, but. With that being said, Dr. Talk about what is heart failure and why is it important to talk about its impact on black Americans uh, and their um, minorities. Thank you, Everett. Yeah, it, heart failure is a longstanding progressive condition that affects the structure or function of the heart and ultimately impedes it from performing its primary function, which is basically to uh, pump blood throughout the body. Uh, it can present itself in a variety of ways, uh, one end of the spectrum, a mild cough, on the other end of the spectrum, uh, severe shortness of breath, which is associated with increased risks of, of hospitalizations. Now, it's very important to talk about heart failure in the context of black Americans. As you mentioned, Everett, black Americans are at a higher risk of developing heart failure, develop heart failure at an earlier age, and have worse outcomes with heart failure than their white counterparts. Now, doctor, talk about how does heart failure impact minorities such as uh, black Americans differently and what, I guess, importance for them to know about it? Well, what I would say is that, you know, the precursors leading to heart failure are, there's commonalities in them. Well, we know that uh, the major risk factors are uh, uncontrolled blood pressure, diabetes, obesity, uh, prior um, uh, coronary artery disease, or prior heart attacks. What we also know is that black Americans, again, for a variety of reasons, have a higher rate of uncontrolled blood pressure, a higher rate of obesity, and a higher rate of diabetes. This, in turn, leads them to have a higher rate of heart failure. 
this is why it's imperative for uh, black Americans being a high risk group in respect to heart failure to be wary of the symptoms and information around heart failure because early detection is so imperative. Now, Dr. Talk about, um, is it manageable and then how, what kind of takeaways you want the audience to remember about heart failure and where can listeners go? I have a great question. It definitely is manageable, but it is a baseline of progressive disease, which means if left on its own accord, it will worsen. There has been great uh, advances in the last 10 years uh, for heart failure therapies. However, uh, racial disparities still exist. Some of the bedrocks for therapy are also uh, bedrocks for therapy and heart failure. Uh, low salt intake, low fat intake, increased activity, take your medications as prescribed. This last one is very important with the advanced therapies that have come over the last 10 years. I'm here with Novartis mostly to spread awareness about racial inequities in healthcare. Uh, in this instance, we're talking about it as it relates to heart failure management and medications and access to medications are a big part of that. Uh, Entresto is a medication uh, for adults uh, with longstanding heart failure that reduces uh, the risk of hospitalizations and reduces the risk of death. And you might ask yourself, with those outcomes, why aren't all patients uh, uh, with heart failure on Entresto? And that's because uh, one, one size does not fit all. And that's why it's so important uh, for patients to contact their doctor and have clear lines of communications with their doctor. For instance, Entresto uh, isn't right for everybody, like any medication. Um, if you're pregnant, if you're currently on an ACE inhibitor or ARB, if you've had swelling, uh, specifically called angioedema in relation to ACE inhibitor or ARB, this medication would not be appropriate for you. All that is to say is vital that uh, your listeners and viewers um, are speaking to their doctor, have clear communication lines with their doctor, and are working with their doctor together to develop a individualized plan for their condition. Well, again, I want to thank our special guest, Dr. Ashkan Hadavudi, who has been with us, co-founder and also chief medical uh, officer uh, for Sivium. Again, thank you so much for doing the Health Corporation. This show is very vital information. And thank you, Everett. And one last thing I, I want to note to your listeners and viewers, if any of them want further information on heart failure, entresto.com is a great resource has a lot of information on heart failure, what it is, what you can do about it, what to ask your doctor, et cetera. Uh, we encourage everybody to go to the website. Thank you. Dr. Ashkin Haidavudi, thank you so much, sir, for doing the show. Thank you. Be well. Coming, I can't believe it's happening to me.